Hi there, this is Brian Tinsman, and we're back with another episode of Enquire Pro, where we are talking to the pros. And today we are lucky enough to be joined by Diplomate COO Ahmet Khan, who is working in the AI space, working in the startup space, and is using Enquire Pro to power some of the decision making that he's made. So uh, Ahmet wanted to welcome you in, and um, if you could expand a little bit on your experience uh, working with Enquire and how that plays into your day to day as a consultant. Um, and really as a, as a business leader. Yeah, sure. My pleasure, Brian. Uh, thank you for having me on. Um, so I was actually um, one of the experts on the Inquire AI platform, uh, receiving network pulses uh, and responding to those. And um, it was fun, you know, sort of like uh, being able to share my expertise uh, with people who are looking for, you know, direction or uh, a sense of how best to proceed. And then when I got noticed that uh, Enquire Pro um, was coming out, I was excited uh, to find out more. Um, and I have actually started uh, using it a lot more frequently uh, for some of my business decisions, uh, reaching out to the panel of experts. And um, I've also been using uh, the IDA Copilot as well, which I really like because what I find is that um, the breadth of um, the uh, subject matter experts is quite impressive and it's global. So you get really a good sense of people from around the world who are subject matter experts uh, weighing in on decisions that you know are quite important, uh, especially for startups when time is of the essence and you get back these responses in a pretty quick time frame, and, and they're well thought out responses as well. It's not gibberish. So you can really rely on that. And then, um, sort of go further because you also see the list of uh, people who have contributed, uh, you look at their backgrounds and if desired, you can actually um, uh, you know, reach out to them to, to schedule a call and really dive deeper into the, into the subject. So I think it's a, it's a great pr platform, honestly. And I think that uh, there are many ways to leverage it to really make informed business decisions. That's great to hear. Um, especially with your experience um, with the startup that you're working on right now. Talk a little bit about that and how um, Enquire has, has helped you with market fit and, and making sure that you're kind of making the right uh, decisions and connecting points along the way that um, take you towards, you know, a, a better business outcome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so at Diplomade, we started out with a B2B type of product offering where we provide digital certification on the blockchain for people who are getting certificates or diplomas. It's a way for them to be able to provide that information to potential employers or people who want to validate their um, degrees or, or their education. Um, so I reached out basically, I, I um, specified, I was looking for people in the education technology space, blockchain space, and I really got some good um, input into um, how best to um, market, what type of audiences to um, uh, market the platform to. And uh, that was a great starting point uh, for us, for the team. Um, most recently, we've been working on a B2C type of product, which is a browser extension called Oku, O-C-U-A-I. And what it does is that it measures the amount of self-learning people are doing online through YouTube videos or you know, Substack or Medium articles. And we're using AI to be able to um, test the knowledge based upon the, the subject matter that they're uh, reading or viewing, and then um, be able to level up and getting badges. So in this age of imp the importance of self-learning and people not necessarily needing a um, uh, college degree to apply for jobs, uh, this way uh, they can really um, measure and, and benefit from you know, the amount of time they're spending. And uh, this actually started this idea after a couple of things. So one, uh, remembering back to Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, where he's at 10,000 hours spent on a, a certain subject um, can make a person subject matter expert. And the other was um, the former uh, CEO of IBM. When she came on board, uh, she actually worked with the HR department and said, hey, we don't necessarily need to hire people with um, college diplomas. If they have the skill set for that particular role, mm -hmm. then we can consider them. So I believe that self-learning um, is going to become even more prevalent and important. And when I reached out to 
um, subject matter experts in the space, I really got some good feedback on browser extensions, the popularity of them, what there might be resistant points, um, and how best to proceed, again, in terms of potential audience fit and market for the product. Well, and, and I can tell you as somebody who has been in the marketing and you know business consulting space for a while that um, if I had to go back to school every time I needed to learn something uh, relevant to a project that comes up or a new client or anything like that, uh, I'd spend all of my time in class and, and really none of it um, really getting out there and, and trying things. Cause that's how quickly some of these spaces are moving. As exactly. You know. Sure. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, blockchain kind of had its moment of of buzz and, and mm -hmm. you know, around pri primarily around, you know, DeFi and, and crypto. But, right. um, you know, it, it, it is sort of uh, there's a lot of mature solutions that are coming out of that space now. Mm -hmm. um, do you see the same happening for AI? And, uh, in, in, you know, that sort of after the, the chat GPT moment where the mm -hmm. dust kind of settles that, um, you know, some really serious applications are popping up out of it. What do you think about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a big buzzword right now. You turn on Netflix and you see whole documentaries and all these, uh, you know, um, shows based upon AI and are they going to be taking over the world, etc. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a tool, basically, you know, it's a decision making tool. It's a tool that people use are using to speed up the process. Um, you know, now we're looking at also vocal um, recognition, voice recognition and being able to use AI for that. You know, artificial intelligence, artificial means something that's uh, not in, found in nature. I actually like to, I think of it as not artificial intelligence, but derivative intelligence, because it's a derivative, right, of people's or of input, basically. So it's, uh, you know, the, the accuracy or the ability to trust that information really relies upon the input and the learning, right, from that. And that's why I like... Um, uh, Enquire because you're getting the information from real life people and, and it's up to date. Um, so I think that going forward, um, you know, AI is going to develop. We've already seen obviously the adoption over the past year in a huge way, and that is going to continue to refine, obviously. But again, it, it's going to depend really upon um, the source. You know, where is that machine learning coming from? Can I trust it? Uh, how much do I need to look uh, over the the answers and the uh, and the output and uh, edit it accordingly? But uh, ultimately, I think people are going to, you know, they're going to probably use multiple channels, but they're mm -hmm. going to use those that they believe um, that they can trust in, in, in the information they're, they're getting. Well, and, and I can give you just a little peek behind the curtain in terms of, you know, some of the conversations that happen at Enquire. But uh you know, last week was was kind of a bad news cycle for some of the other you know sort of big box AI chatbot solutions. Um, you know, Google ran out its Gemini, um, uh, you know, basically a summary um, section, and because of some of the inputs that they you know the the underlying data, um, which you know was capturing people's sarcasm, was capturing people who were just wrong about things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I will say that there's a certain advantage with um, with Enquire in that people are incentivized to give real answers. You may not agree with them. They may have a biased perspective for whatever reason, but I think they're putting in a good faith effort to to give you real information. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to decision making as as somebody who's in the C-suite, um, you know, how important is it to know that the other person or, or the, the source of information that you're making decisions based on um, is, is reputable, high quality? You know, what is your process for that? Sure. I think it's extremely important. I mean, for instance, before we actually um, put out the, um, the MVP on the B2C product, um, we did a survey going out to real people and we found out actually the product is better suited for the younger generation. Um, so we're going to be using that um, for our marketing budget in terms of what platforms we're going to use to market this product. Uh, again, when I got the network pulse, uh, there were certain things that were pointed out that uh, from people, right, that were real time experts. So that is critical because when you're using marketing dollars in a real way, you need to make informed decisions and you have to trust that. And coming from people who are actually subject matter experts, is 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 critical i think honestly so and then when you can see their background and 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 validate their expertise that's that's a whole nother level so you know getting back to your other question about ai you know i've seen on other social networks like facebook where people are being um 
censored or their posts are being taken down or they're being penalized because they AI doesn't always understand the nuances, right? That's so right. you have to have people uh, involved to some degree making those decisions and uh, an appeal process, et cetera. So um, it's going to be a lot of um, learning in the process and probably a lot of mistakes. But I think that ultimately it's, you know, they say garbage in, garbage out. You have to make sure that you have true, valid, substantiated information to be able to make informed decisions. That's a great perspective. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, so talk a little bit about uh, some of the features of Enquire Pro that you've been able to test out, you know, coming from the expert side, it, you actually have a pretty narrow view of what's happening on the back end. You basically mm -hmm. only know when you've been matched um, to, a, a, you know, a, an engagement. Um, mm -hmm. So what was that experience like? And then, um, you know, how have you how have you sort of walked through some of the features so far? What are you using the most? Sure. So when I get a network pulse request. What I found is that I, I need to answer it quickly because there are a lot of uh, uh, people out there, which again, validates the platform because it shows that you have a very um, strong um, uh, panel of experts in a wide variety of, variety of subjects. So it's important. And that helps as well, because when you put a network pulse question out there, you want to get uh, feedback as quick as possible. So that really helped me because sometimes, you know, I saved for the end of the day, I said, I'll respond. And then when I tried to respond, uh, they had met the quota already. So it means that there are people out there who are actively engaging with the platform. So you know that it's not stale. So that's really important, I would say. Um, in terms of my use, uh, when I put out the query uh, into the um, into the, the plot onto the platform, I was really amazed again, the speed with which I received the replies and the quality of the replies and the background of the people who are actually responding to that query. So that even further ingrained in my head the um, uh, the impressive nature uh, of where Enquire uh, AI has uh, has gotten to. Um, and um, you know, like I said, I I will look uh, to see what um, current uh, subjects are being. Uh, raise the most, which questions are being asked. Uh, and that also gives a nice sense of like what the world is thinking about. Um, and um, I've used Ida, as I mentioned, just to get, um, you know, simple questions, pol politics around the world. And you, again, you get really good on, uh, you know, on target type of responses. So overall, I would say the speed, um, the relevance and the uh, expertise have all have all been really stellar, I would say, on the platform. That's great. That's great. So I know we talked a little bit about networking and how um, you know that that that's sort of a, a whole frontier that we'll pick up as there's mm -hmm. more daily active usage. But um, you know, are there any other um, just open ended? You know, are there any other features and things that you're looking forward to? Things that you would want to see with a product like this that mm -hmm. would really help in the way that you're using it right now? Um, you sure. know, with, when it comes to market fit. And, uh, you know, how people are um, just gauging how, how people in the knowledge sharing space are, are using tools like this. Sure. Um, I, I would say the networking feature is something that I definitely like to expand on myself. Um, I found that other social media networks have become a little stale um, and, you know, oversubscribed. Um, there, there is one large one, which I won't mention by name, but that's been taken over sometimes by AI bots. So I'll get network um, connection requests from who are not real people, honestly, and it's a waste of my time, right? So I'll look at their background and I'll see that it's the bio is all made up. So that, again, that uh, element of trust is really important. So when I know that the people on the Inquire AI platform are, have been vetted out, um, their, you know, their bios are for real, I want to engage more with those people. I want to reach out to those people and really expand my network as well. So I've already sent out a um, bunch of requests through the platform. Uh, and I think that that will be an important feature going forward uh, to get people who are, um, you know, uh, have that share that common interest and share that level of trust amongst each other. Um, I think that feature should be expanded upon. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you, uh, kind of kicking things back over to uh, the Diplomate side, how do yeah. you think um, AI and really technology in general, kind of that cutting edge where we are right now, mm -hmm. um, 
what is what is learning and development and sort of professional development? What do those look like in a few years as your tool and and um, and technology just sort of pushes the boundaries of where we are? Right. Sure. Um, the way that we'll be using AI for Diplomay with the uh, Oku platform is to be able to uh, test people on the knowledge that they've gained basically using AI technology. So uh, basically tracking you know, what material they've been following, what subjects they've been reading about and asking, you know, not like simple questions, but things that are uh, going to really test their knowledge. So, um, again, we want to show the validity of that person's subject matter expertise based upon all the reading and all the knowledge and all the research they've done and to be able to use AI to, um, uh, to uh, provide these uh, type of test to gauge their level of uh, expertise is, is, is going to be important. Uh, I think that um, you know, we'll probably look for other um, methods as well to be able to capitalize and leverage uh, AI, but I think it has to be a very thoughtful process because you have to really make sure that um, you know it's something that people are, um, not just people who are using it, but the people who are going to be judging the people or um, uh, who are using it, have mm -hmm. that faith and that confidence. You know, we've all read about um, students using AI to write their term papers or college essays, et cetera. And now there are counter tools to check to see whether people have actually been using AI. And I know even on the Enquire AI platform, when they do the network pulses, right. there's a, a little uh, note there not to use AI, right? So ultimately, again, I think it's going to be a tool that's going to be refined. Um, it's going to get better. But people will have to still um, look at the uh, end, end result. They can't just copy and paste. They can use it as a tool maybe to outline to to-do list or things to follow up on or to create like an outline for a presentation, et cetera. But that's what it is. It's just a time-saving tool initially that they can use to leverage to expand upon that and make sure that the information is relevant. As it gets more refined, or you know, with even with Enquire AI platform, when you trust the people who are providing those answers, it gives you that extra level of confidence that hey, yes, I will review it, but I don't have to necessarily worry as much whether this it is um, false information or not. You know, it could be opinions, obviously, people, but again, you value those opinions because they have the expertise in those areas. That's great. That's great. So in terms of uh, just your experience in the consulting world, in the AI mm -hmm. space, um, you know, working with technology in the knowledge sharing arena, um, mm -hmm. where do you think all of that is going? Um, you know, you, you sort of hinted at it there, but mm -hmm. um, do, do humans ever come out of, completely out of the loop on, on this stuff? Or is this, uh, you know, sort of a, a marriage that makes maybe both sides a little bit stronger? Yeah, I, I think humans will have to be involved to some degree for oversight and to create the right prompts, right? So we'll probably see more jobs created uh, along those lines. I think it has affected basically um, the whole job market, right? Uh, I know people who are hiring managers who, first of all, are inundated with a thousand resumes when they list a job because AI bots are... Um, taking keywords from the job description, rejiggering you know people's resumes and automatically sending their, uh, the resumes out. So that's making hiring managers' uh, lives more difficult to understand whether the applicant actually has the the relevant expertise. So now they're counter countering with mm -hmm. the, um, right. their own <laughs> tools, right, for that purpose. But I think, for instance, like um, a hiring manager who's hired ten engineers might hire four or five, expecting those five to augment their productivity using AI. And I think that, you know, for instance, law firms who uh, we, I think recently we read about um, a large law firm laying off their first year associates because in the past they would uh, prepare the drafts, which the partners would review. And now the partners are actually using AI to prepare the drafts. And that is obviously lessening the need for more junior personnel. So it's going to shift um, the overall landscape uh, of, um, of of workers and responsibilities. There will probably be more professions created that we're not even thinking about right now. But I think that um, the adoption has been so quick. I mean, I remember I was at a conference a couple of months after uh, AI, you know, was a buzzword. And when they took an informal poll of the executives in the auditorium, 
I would say about 80% of them raised their hands that they were already using AI. So that level uh, of speed and people adopting this technology, I think is going to continue, but it's how are people using it? Are they using it um, judiciously? Are they actually augmenting their skills? Are they, um, or are people cheating themselves? Like again, college students, are they cheating themselves in education by relying on AI to write their papers for them? Um, yeah, it's such a great perspective that, you know, we think of it as cheating as them getting mm -hmm. ahead, but if you don't learn anything in the process, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the, uh, the hefty price tag that comes with right. the, you know, higher education right now, that's right. That's really their loss, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's just a, it's a digitized, digitized version. When I was at Columbia in the eighties, uh, we had cliff notes, right? Which were summaries right. of the books that we read, right? So people had different types of tools at that point. This is just a, a newer, uh, version, uh, of a tool. Um, that's obviously a lot quicker. Um, and people again, will use it. Um, and maybe there might be, um, an inflection point where, uh, People will value, you know, human input more, uh, perhaps. Who, who's to say? I think it's really exciting, honestly. Um, but, you know, my son, who's a philosophy and uh, political science major, and he's an excellent writer and researcher, he won't touch AI. He's like, nope, that goes against the grain. Uh, I, I studied for a reason, uh, and I rely on my own resources to be the best writer that I can be. So there will be some purists in this space. I'm not sure how much... Uh, you know, of the overall population that is. But uh, I think, again, I use it on a daily basis. Again, I use it as a tool um, to save some time mm -hmm. and some repetitive tasks, basically. But it, again, you have to have some oversight over it. I, I saw something the other day. Um, it was a good perspective. It was that we don't want to use AI to, to do the things that give us joy so that we have more time to mow the lawn and do laundry. Exactly. Um, I saw that too. Right. Yeah. You know, that yeah, it's, yeah. It, that it really, um, the, the many applications for which it can be used, um, you know, white collar, blue collar, um, mm -hmm. across industries is, is yeah. going to vary quite a bit, but, right, um, right. but you're yeah, right. I, I mean, think there will be a purist element, um, with almost anyone I would imagine. Yeah, who, right you know, hopefully you're not giving away the thing that you enjoy doing most. So, yeah. I yeah, mean, good. you know, the AI again can look at patterns for fraud prevention, right? For instance, they could look at things like that um, for human resources, human resources based upon a lot of rule sets, basically. So looking for um, uh, specific rules and laws and regulations by geography. So this, mm -hmm. there are definitely ways that it can save time for people um, that uh, were repetitive tasks for them so they could focus on more value added tasks, honestly. So I get, you know, it's going to be a give and take, honestly. Well, so I'll put you on the spot with this one. Okay. Um, uh, who do you think are going to be, uh, some of the winners and losers, um, in the next few years? You know, we, we won't push the window out too far cause who knows, but, um, just, you know, based on maybe current trends and, and what you're seeing, what you're thinking, um, mm -hmm. How will AI impact the broader economy? Uh, so I think, again, like certain industries will be much more affected. The, the legal industry, for instance, uh, I mentioned human resources, anything where there are specific rules um, that AI can look at that and examine and look for patterns and, um, and, and uh, pr you know, present a dashboard basically for decision makers. Um, certain industries like plumbers and electricians and, to, you know, uh, where you need hands-on, I don't think they're yeah. going to be as effective as much. But anything, you know, there was even an article about whether CEOs can be replaced with AI in the future, right? Who knows? I, I think it's kind of the Wild West right now. And I think that um, uh, as the technology becomes more refined, you know, there's going to be obviously some legal aspects to it as well. So I think um, legal expertise, I've actually I mentor some people, some people I know who are applying to law school, I'm like, think very carefully about which type of law you want to study, mm -hmm. you want to practice, because, you know, there are going to be copyright issues. We already seen some cases, we've seen, you know, um, authors who are challenging. Uh, we saw Scarlett Johansson who was saying that her voice right. was being used, right? So there are going to be a lot of cases, I mean, the whole Hollywood thing, right? They didn't want AI to take over the industry, um, you know, the, the level of sophistication with voice generated prompts creating videos now is is really remarkable and that's mm -hmm. only going to become more and more refined so i think it 
it will affect a lot of industries, honestly, going forward. Um, to what degree, I, I, the jury's still out, but as it becomes um, more pervasive, as it becomes more uh, trust, you know, uh, trustable, uh, I think that we're going to see um, maybe hiring managers um, waiting, uh, wait and see attitude or hiring less people, right? And again, expecting them to augment their output with the use of AI. Um, so unless it's a really hands-on, you know, I was going to say chefs, but I saw an AI robot actually preparing food in the kitchen too. You know, the days of the Jetsons maybe are, are not too far away from us. Well, and I saw, uh, I saw a, um, I guess an AI powered crane that was building a house, uh, in a day, you know, mm -hmm. just, just with, with bricks, it's basically a Lego setup. Right. Right. Um, but it, you know, it, it works. Yeah. So you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and once that stuff becomes possible, you're yeah. right. What other professions does that then create out of that, mm -hmm. out of that process? Right. So, yeah, yeah I, I tend to agree. I think the winners are going to be, mm -hmm. um, in industries that we don't really think about yet. And, right. um, and those who, who take the plunge and get involved early. Cause I think it's, it's a fast moving train right now. Sure. Uh, you know, we see AI with drones, obviously, I think future wars, you know, are going to have robots. So that element of discretion might be uh, less um, important. Uh, it's 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 really you know it, it, it's um it's it's these are very interesting times to be living in, honestly, because everything um, information is spread so quickly, um, and unfortunately, misinformation is also spread very quickly. We read about AI bots who are you know um, on social media platforms spreading disinformation, and people can be very susceptible to that. So that's another. Um, danger point or flashing sign that uh, people need to be aware of. Yeah, it's it's a war for your mind right now. That is mm -hmm. absolutely the world that we live in. So, um, yeah. well, I really in, uh, appreciate um, allowing me to pick your mind for a bit and, mm -hmm. um, you know, really enjoyed this and glad to hear that uh, Enquire Pro is being is being utilized for your business and, and mm -hmm. to really um, create the efficiencies that you're looking for, really target things well as you um, go to market and things like that. So um, we'll stay in touch and, and mm -hmm. we'd love to get your feedback as we continue to roll out updates. As I mentioned um, before, you know that we are planning on rolling out a mobile app, a new and improved mobile app to the uh, both the, the Apple and Android stores. So mm -hmm. looking forward to that. And I think we're going to see um, continued growth, continued interest on the platform, and hopefully that that networking component of it um, really realizes all of the potential that it has. So appreciate your time today. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll continue this conversation as we go. But uh, thanks so much for joining us. And is there anything else you want to leave us with? Any nuggets of wisdom from your perspective? Uh, uh, you know, thank you again for having me on. And I would say you asked me about winners and losers um, or winners. Um, I would say that Enquire AI probably is going to be one of the winners in this space. So looking forward to the mobile app and all the new enhancements that are coming out. Well, I can't end it on a better note than that. So thank you.